The biggest problem China is facing now is widespread unemployment. It is getting harder and harder to find a job. Do you know how difficult it was in 2023? In 2023, about 900 million people were in debt. The per capita debt is as high as 140,000. About 460,000 companies have gone bankrupt, including 320,000 physical stores, and more than 400 real estate companies have filed for bankruptcy. After the new year in February, the world may really change. There have been too many abnormal phenomena recently. It is difficult to sell houses, but there are more people renting them. Car prices have dropped, but there are fewer people buying cars. It's been three years since the pandemic. It was said that there would be revenge spending, but instead it was revenge saving. In the past two years, Various big names have withdrawn for the public eye, one after the other, as expected. Starting from the explosion of leading real estate companies, it has already indicated that real estate dividends will disappear. These abnormal phenomena indicate that this year, something big is really going to happen. The downturn of the Chinese economy is not only impacting the mainland real estate sector, but also the luxury property market in Hong Kong. Since mid-2022, there has been a sharp decline in luxury property prices in Hong Kong, with average prices plummeting by over a quarter. Furthermore, the number of Chinese tycoons purchasing luxury properties in Hong Kong has significantly decreased, reflecting the influence of the Chinese economic slowdown. Analysts suggest that the situation may further deteriorate this year. Some real estate giants are struggling to prevent the collapse of their commercial empires, being compelled to sell off their Hong Kong luxury properties at discounted prices to quickly liquidate assets. According to reports from the Wall Street Journal, some of the most expensive residences in Hong Kong are now changing hands at significantly discounted prices compared to several years ago. Victor Cheng, a real estate broker in Hong Kong, pointed out that some Chinese homeowners are forced or pressured to sell their properties as they need cash to repay debts. These properties are typically sold at around 20% below market value. He also noted that some luxury properties purchased by mainland executives are only occasionally used and not rented out. Sherry Lai, senior director and head of residential sales in Hong Kong at leading global real estate services firm Seville's, stated that since mid-2022, the average selling price of ultra-luxury residences in Hong Kong, priced at over 38 million U.S. dollars, has dropped by over 25 percent. She highlighted that with sellers accepting price reductions to expedite sales, prices are expected to further decline this year. The continuous weakness in the Chinese real estate market has particularly severe repercussions on the Hong Kong luxury property market. In recent years, some of the largest luxury property transactions in Hong Kong have been tied to Chinese real estate tycoons. According to revelations from Victoria Allen, founder of Habitat Property, three luxury properties for sale in Hong Kong are linked to the troubled Chinese conglomerate Evergrande. According to Hong Kong media reports, the ultimate owners of these luxury properties is Xu Jiayin, the founder of Evergrande. These three properties are adjacent luxury residences located on Barker Road in the peak and have been seized by creditors. Real estate brokers indicate that properties seized by creditors are typically sold at discounted prices below market value. Allen mentioned that Xu Jiayin's Unit B in Tower 10 was sold for around 115 million U.S. dollars in 2019, but its current valuation by banks is only around 55 million dollars. This property has not yet found a new buyer. The other two properties may be listed for sale next month. Another luxury residential development project in Hong Kong, Residence Bel Air, includes an Ocean View property owned by Mai Fun. CEO of property developer Kaiser Group. Kaiser Group and land records show that Mai Fan purchased this luxury property in 2017 when prices were still rising. However, in recent years, with the expansion of the Chinese real estate crisis, Kaiser Group has also defaulted. According to data from the land registry, in 2021, the relevant authorities appointed a receiver to dispose of this property, and the receiver sold it in 2022 for around $46 million. Additionally, Chen Hongtian, founder of the real 
real estate investment company Sheng Talk Group purchased a luxury high-rise residence in 2015 for 49.5 million U.S. dollars, but it was subsequently seized by creditors. In September last year, shipping tycoon Kwok Si Lai bought the property for $53.4 million, far below the market valuation of around $87 million claimed by the real estate agent at the time. Seville's also noted that last month, a luxury residence located on the peak was sold for $107 million, marking one of the highest sales records in Hong Kong's property market in recent years. However, the property was initially priced at $166 million, indicating the pressure for discounted sales. According to data from the Hong Kong Land Registry, as of the end of 2023, the private domestic price index has dropped to its lowest level in seven years. Moreover, analysis data from the online real estate platform Spacious.hk indicates that the days ahead for Hong Kong luxury properties will be even tougher. James Fisher, chief operating officer of Spacious.hk, stated that over the past 12 months, inquiries for properties priced at $10 million or above on the platform have decreased by 45%. Inquiries for properties below 1.3 million and between 1.3 million and 3.2 million have also decreased by 8% and 25% respectively. Furthermore, according to transaction records, the interest among Chinese tycoons in purchasing luxury properties in Hong Kong has also declined. In 2023, there were only 14 transactions exceeding $100 million in the southern district of the peak, a 33.3% decrease from the previous year and the lowest in the past decade. The data indicates that the Hong Kong property market has never seen such subdued activity in luxury property transactions since the boom from 2009 to 2018. This is partly due to tycoons shifting their focus to Singapore and also reflects an inadequate demand for luxury properties, influenced by the Chinese economy and hindered by financing constraints caused by the performance of Hong Kong stocks. Hong Kong's economy has been deeply affected by local politics. Data shows that since the implementation of the Hong Kong National Security Law in 2020, the stock and property prices in Hong Kong have dropped by at least 7.7 trillion Hong Kong dollars. The primary economic drivers in Hong Kong, namely property and finance, have shown no signs of improvement at the beginning of this year. Despite a rebound in the Hong Sung Index after the Chinese New Year, it still lags behind major global markets. During the heyday of the property market, Hong Kong residents often viewed the Chinese New Year holiday as an opportunity for property viewings, and Chinese tycoons would also visit Hong Kong during the extended holiday to inspect properties. However, during this year's four-day public holiday, there were zero transactions recorded in Hong Kong's 10 major housing estates. This indicates a lack of confidence among buyers in the Hong Kong economy, a tendency towards cautious observation, and possibly insufficient liquidity among would-be buyers. According to a study released by the Hong Kong Legislative Council in 2021, the estimated market value of private residential properties in Hong Kong was around 12 trillion Hong Kong dollars in 2019. Statistics from the Rating and Valuation Department show that the property price index was at 383 points in 2019, but as of December 2023, it stood at 312.1 points, representing a decrease of 18.5% during the period. It is estimated that the property market has evaporated 2.22 trillion Hong Kong dollars since 2019. According to market statistics released by the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, the total market capitalization of Hong Kong stocks was 36.6 trillion Hong Kong dollars in 2019. However, as of November 2023, it had fallen to 31.1 trillion Hong Kong dollars, resulting in a loss of 5.5 trillion Hong Kong dollars during the period. Together with the 2.22 trillion Hong Kong dollars evaporated from the property market as mentioned earlier, the combined loss of stocks and property in Hong Kong amounted to a staggering 7.7 trillion Hong Kong dollars since 2019. The sharp decline in the Hong Kong stock market has resulted in heavy losses for Hong Kong tycoons. According to a report by Forbes on February 21st, due to the IPO drought, the benchmark Hang Seng Index has fallen by 28% over the past year, leading to a 9% decrease in the total net worth of Hong Kong's 50 richest tycoons to $296 billion. Despite his net worth dropping to $36.2 billion, Li Ka-shing remained the wealthiest individual. The share price of his real estate development company, CK Asset Holdings, dropped by a third from the previous year. And the company 
has been reducing prices of residential projects to stimulate consumption. Property tycoon Li Xiaoqi remains in second place, with his net worth decreasing to $27 billion. Although his gas utility and hotel businesses performed relatively well, the stock price of his property company Henderson Land Development fell by 30%. Property and jewelry tycoon Cheng Yutang, executive director of Chao Tai Fook Group, ranked third. Due to the slowdown in mainland demand, his net worth, jointly owned with his family, decreased to $22.1 billion, a decrease of nearly $7 billion, marking the largest decline in terms of U.S. dollars. Stephen Roach, former chairman of Morgan Stanley Asia, wrote an article in the Financial Times on February 12th saying that due to factors such as local politics, China's economy, and deteriorating Sino-U.S. relations, Hong Kong is done. Roach lamented in the article that the city he once called home and regarded as the bastion of dynamism has become the world's worst performing stock market in the past 25 years. After the handoff of sovereignty in 1997, the Hong Sung Index was essentially flat, rising only about 5%. During the same period, the S&P 500 soared more than fourfold. Roach pointed out that the extradition bill introduced by former Hong Kong chief executive Carrie Lam became a turning point for Hong Kong. After that, Hong Kong's advantages were gone forever. Roach analyzed that Hong Kong's situation was affected by three factors. The first was local politics. The government led by Carrie Lam promoted the revision of the Fugitive Offenders Ordinance in 2019, triggering a large-scale democratic movement. Later, Beijing promoted the National Security Council Act in Hong Kong, which weakened Hong Kong's autonomy and severed the promise of keeping Hong Kong unchanged for 50 years. The second factor is related to China. Roach thinks that historically, the Hong Kong stock market has always been a sort of lever for the mainland economy. However, there are several reasons why the Chinese economy is facing difficulties. These include structural issues like the three Ds, debt, deflation, and demographics. This, along with the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic and cyclical pressures on the real estate market and local government financing, has led to a bear market lasting three years, directly affecting Hong Kong. A bear market refers to a stock market characterized by falling prices and inactive trading. It is generally considered that when prices fall by at least 20% or more, the stock market is recorded as being in a bear market. The third reason Roach cites is the international situation. Since 2018, tensions between China and the United States have escalated, and Hong Kong has been deeply embroiled in this rivalry. America's allies in Asia are forced to choose sides between China and the United States, and Hong Kong's foreign trade has been affected as it no longer has political decision-making power. Roach reminisced about his first visit to Hong Kong in the late 1980s, recalling how the plane flew over steep mountain peaks before landing at the old Kai Tak airport. He was captivated by the extraordinary vitality of the business community. He concluded by saying, Back then, Hong Kongers had both a vision and a strategy. China was just beginning to stir, and Hong Kong was perfectly positioned as the major beneficiary of what turned into the world's greatest development miracle. It all worked out brilliantly, for longer than anyone expected, and now it's over. Meanwhile, the Financial Times reported that the world's second-largest U.S.-based international law firm, Latham & Watkins LLP, is splitting the database of its Hong Kong branch from the firm's international database. Informed sources revealed that the multinational law firm has informed its employees that although Hong Kong staff can access documents from China, they will no longer be able to view other content in the international database from this month onward without special permission. Sources said that Latham & Watkins LLP has revoked default access for Hong Kong lawyers to its databases in the United States, Europe, the Middle East, and other parts of Asia. One source stated that the Chinese Communist authorities have strengthened their control over Hong Kong, raising concerns among American companies. Latham & Watkins is now treating Hong Kong and mainland China equally. The law firm is also planning to separate the databases of its Hong Kong office from those of other regions in Asia, Seoul, Singapore, and Tokyo offices, and create a Greater China database to be shared with the Beijing office. This means that if the Chinese authorities conduct a sudden search and seizure operation in Hong Kong, law enforcement agencies will only have access to databases from Hong Kong and China. The sources added that in recent months, the company has also instructed employees not to bring work laptops when traveling to mainland China.
Since the Chinese government implemented stricter data security law and anti-espionage laws, many multinational corporations have begun to decouple their systems in China from those in other parts of the world. And global funds are accelerating the withdrawal from China, affecting Hong Kong as well. Bloomberg analyzed holding reports from 14 U.S. retirement funds with assets exceeding $500 million and invested in Chinese stocks, and found that since 2020, most pension funds have been gradually reducing their holdings of Chinese stocks. Among them, two of the largest retirement fund investors in the United States, the California Public Employees Retirement System and the New York State Common Retirement Fund, have been reducing their investments in the Chinese market for the third consecutive year. Some funds are completely divesting from the Chinese market. In December last year, the Missouri State Employees Retirement System requested its employees to withdraw all global public equity investments currently held in China. The report stated that initially, the withdrawal of these mainstream funds was merely performance-driven, but it could evolve into a structural change due to growing skepticism about China's long-term economic issues, concerns about the vulnerability of the Chinese real estate industry, and worsening U.S.-China strategic competition. Some large pension fund managers in the United States and Australia have also expressed caution about their investment strategies in China. It is difficult for Hong Kong, which is backed by mainland China, to stand alone. A month ago, the U.S. Federal Retirement Thrift Investment Board, FRTIB, announced that it would adjust the benchmark index of its international funds for 2024 in response to increasingly heightened geopolitical risks. This means that the indices of Hong Kong-listed stocks will no longer be included. On November 14 last year, the FRTIB, with assets totaling $770 billion, said in a statement that following a routine review of the Thrift Savings Plan, TSP, it has decided to change the benchmark of its International Stock Index Investment Fund, the I-Fund. In other words, apart from mainland China, the FRTIB will also exclude investments in the Hong Kong market from its international fund, which amounts to as much as $68 billion. Senior political commentator Ji Da said that the international divestment from China has had a huge impact on Hong Kong. Ji Da said, Now Hong Kong is forced to become more like the mainland. The intensity of international divestment has further hit the Hong Kong economy, which is alarming. At present, the Hong Kong economy has no way out. Hong Kong's leaders keep running to the mainland, cozying up to the CCP. But with China's own economic difficulties, what can they rely on? In addition, China's economy continues to languish with a rapid decline in manufacturing exports, sluggish consumer spending, persistent deflation, and an escalating crisis in the real estate market, all of which are negative developments. At the beginning of this year, due to concerns about slowing growth and deepening deflation, unprecedented since the global financial crisis, the Chinese stock market hit a five-year low, prompting comparisons to the turmoils of 2015, which forced policymakers into action. Tommy Wu, senior economist at Commerce Bank, told Reuters, 2024 is a crucial year for China to stabilize the economy. However, the current situation is a lot more complicated. Since 2021, the property market has plummeted as developers face a series of defaults after years of excessive leverage and bad investments. Infrastructure spending is also difficult to maintain due to high levels of local government debt. The rubber stamp parliament of the CCP, the National People's Congress, will begin its annual session on March 5th, but there are no signs indicating that the CCP authorities are formulating significant stimulus measures or ambitious reform plans. Logan Wright, partner at Rhodium Group, told Reuters, People have generally underestimated Beijing's options for stimulating the economy through fiscal policy or faster credit growth through banks due to various restrictions. He said the CCP will not bring out the policy bazooka, partly because China does not have good options for maintaining growth through its traditional channels. Ludovic Soubran, chief economist at Alliance France, who has worked at the World Bank and the French Ministry of Finance, wrote in Les Echos on February 22nd, analyzing that China's economic growth is likely to further slow down in 2024. The crisis of confidence among Chinese consumers has also weakened China's economic development, and Beijing has ended its strict control measures against the COVID-19 pandemic, but the Chinese economy has not rebounded as expected. In the short term, Chinese consumers are depressed due to shrinking wealth and savings, and the Chinese real estate industry is down about 26% compared to before the pandemic. 
the real estate bubble has burst, indicating a sluggish domestic demand in China. It is noteworthy that with the rapid decoupling from the West, such as the United States and Europe, direct foreign investment in China is also rapidly depreciating. Moreover, increasing regulatory barriers and deteriorating geopolitical situations are weakening the attractiveness of the Chinese market. Some say you can withdraw investment in China at any time, but you can never leave and take your money with you. Subran believes that China needs to avoid economic stagnation at all costs, especially for state-owned enterprises with low efficiency, while giving more room for survival to China's middle class to restore confidence and drive China's economic growth. Some analysts believe that Beijing policymakers seem to prioritize social stability and national security over sustainable growth due to concerns that adopting different development models could disrupt the existing status quo. Derek Scissors, China economic expert at the American Enterprise Institute, said, "It would be like admitting serious long-term mistakes if there were major shifts now, which is unlikely."